am Gwen Schoen, food writer for the Sacramento Bee, and today in the kitchen, Belinda Greger from Ettore's, mm -hmm. welcome, Thank you. is going to show us how to do something I've never done before, and that's frost a cake with fondant frosting, yes. or coat a cake with fondant frosting, with and fondant that's frosting. the type of frosting that you frequently see on wedding cakes. Yes, the wedding cakes and a lot of the specialty cakes that we carry at Ettore's uh, all Great. tend to be covered with this. And you can buy fondant at a cake decorating shop? Yes, you can. Um, a lot of brands out there. Um, the Wilton one is available at Michael's, and then there's also things like Satin Ice and uh, the Albert Ooster, quite a few different varieties to choose from. So if you try one and you see that you don't like the taste of it, you can always try another brand, or if you order in advance, you can get fondant through Ettore's as well. Great. Uh, it would take about a pound of fondant to cover a, um, like a nine inch layer I'm cake? I'm just using a bit more fondant. That way I can have plenty to cut off so I don't come mm -hmm. up too short. Okay. Because sometimes it's harder um, to work with less fondant than it is to work with more. Because more you can always just cut off and then knead again like I'm doing right now and then just put it right back in your bucket. Uh, airtight container. So you're kneading it like a bread dough mm -hmm. and you're using cornstarch instead of flour. Yes, uh, cornstarch is going to keep it dry and up here it can get pretty humid so that kind of helps to keep it from sticking to the board as well as the rolling pin. If you find that the fondant that you're working with is too dry and it's cracking, just knead a little bit of Crisco into that. Oh, great. And okay. Rolling pin will start rolling it out. You just kind of want to go from the center out and rotate it. That way you can kind of evenly roll it from there. And if you have a little hard bit in there, you can just pluck that right out, set that aside, and then just start rolling and that'll all kind of level itself out there. You just keep rolling and churning. And you're going to want to take it down to about a quarter to eighth of an inch. Uh, somewhere within that, depending on, you know, if your cake is a little bumpy and you want to hide some imperfections, you can go a little bit thicker or you can go a little bit thinner um, if you have a pretty smooth, well set cake ready to go for you. Now, you want a circumference that'll go across the top of the cake and down both sides, mm -hmm. right? And here I've got a little bubble that's starting to form underneath the fondant. You probably can't see it on camera, but when you're working at home, you'll be able to see a little unevenness and you can feel it mm -hmm. right in there. Oh, uh -huh. So instead of being smooth like it is over here, oh, right it's now it's sort of like Play-Doh. Yeah, <laughs> it's a lot of consistency um, towards the Play-Doh type nature. You're just going to slide it in at an angle and then go right over it and it's going to pop all your little bubbles there to keep your surface nice and perfectly smooth. So now how thick is this? About an eighth of an inch? Uh, this is probably closer to a quarter. Okay. A quarter, between a quarter and an eighth I would say. Okay. And the cake has already been frosted. Yeah, we've already put the base cut of the buttercream on there, smoothed okay. it out so it's ready to go. And is it chilled? Uh, yes, it has okay. been chilled because you don't want to try to put um, fondant on top of soft buttercream. For the most part, you just take it up, toss it down. I can just slide it over while doing that. And then you're going to want to take a paddle, which you can just pick up at any little supply store and just go around the top first, making sure that it's nice and smooth. If you got a few air bubbles, just work them lightly out to the sides. And then from there you just... That's really pretty amazing how easy it is. Mm -hmm. But it's also many years of practice for me. So <laughs> you just kind of want to slowly go around the sides here, spinning it and just kind of pulling at the bottom and then make sure that your top is always set because a lot of people tend to have cracks on the top edge. Mm -hmm. So you just kind of want to get your top edge set by running your hands on there and then slowly just run it down. Okay, that's nice and smooth now. Yep, and to make it all the more smooth, we want to make sure, because there's still air pockets in here, we want to go around the cake with our paddle, and here you can see the little lip came up. Mm -hmm. So you just want to bring it in, because sometimes that's buttercream. Um, other times it can be air pockets, so you just want to slowly bring it around. And here I have an air pocket forming, so I'll just keep pulling it towards me so that I can kind of watch where it's going. And then once I do that, I'm going to take one of my little pins and then just insert it at an angle right below and then smooth that oh, out. Oh, that lets the air out a little yeah, bit. Yeah, that's going to help to kind of burp the cake, I guess you could say. <laughs> and then you just trim around the edge with your knife. You just start from one side and just bring it right around the edge there. 
Okay, the fondant's all on. What's the so next step? Next, I'm going to be using royal icing and a bag with a number three tip to mm -hmm. put on our small little um, pulled pearl border is what Ooh. I usually call it. And royal icing, for those of you who don't know, is basically powdered sugar and cream of tartar and egg whites. Okay, so now I'm going to apply a pulled bead border. You just squeeze it out and let it... What's it called? A pulled bead border. Oh, pulled bead. Okay. Yes. And you just push it and then pull it. So you just let it fill up and then just bring it down. Oh, that's pretty. Very elegant. Mm -hmm. It's one of the favorite borders that I love using on all of my wedding cakes. So now you're going to decorate the cake with some cutouts? Yeah, I just rolled out a nice light shade of pink fondant. And I'm going to take a few of my little round cutters that I have here and cut a little circle. And in order to get these to stick onto the fondant, what you're going to want to do is place it on top of a clean, moist, wet towel. And I'm just going to take out the little centers there and do a few of them at a time, go with some varying sizes. To just make them a little damp? Yeah, just get them a little sticky. That's all you're trying to do is just make them sticky. And then they're just going to fit right on there, just stick to themselves, basically. Cute. So you can do a couple of them at a time, just kind of wiggle them around. And then you just place them right on the side of the cake. And you can go as bold with the color as you want or as subdued with the color. And then we just go all over the cake with these. Well, Belinda, this you make this look so easy. And I really appreciate having a such a nice lesson working with fondant. Oh, my pleasure to let you. Thank you very much. See how to do this. And hopefully more people can start enjoying all of the really fun things that you can do with fondant because it really allows you to have much more creativity when working with your cakes. Thank you. Mm -hmm.